Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Getting Started with the VCAP DCA training. So, where do we begin? Well, first let's look, talk a little bit about the purpose of this course. Uh, this is kind of a more narrow focus course than a general knowledge course. So I want to make sure we understand, you know, what we're going to cover, what you need to know, and kind of what to expect as we go through it. So, obviously, you know, going by the title of this course, uh, it's really to prepare you for the VCAP 5 DCA but it's also to expand your vSphere knowledge. So it does a bit of both. The idea is to hit some of the more advanced topics that you may not be familiar with in vSphere or may not use on a daily basis. So, you know, it, it's dual purpose. One, I want you to learn the material, absolutely. I'm, a, I'm an instructor who teaches material, not an exam, and I, I think people need to learn the material and be able to come up and answer exam questions based on what they've learned, not just memorizing information. So. That's how I take exams. That's how I like to train people. That way we kind of keep the integrity of the certifications. So it's to prepare you for the VCAP 5 exam. Some prerequisites, a couple things. I would expect VCP level knowledge and some hands-on experience. Actually, the more hands-on experience, the better. We'll talk about why in a minute, but you're going to have a lot of lab time when you take the VCAP exam. But I also don't have time in this course to kind of reinforce or review standard VCP information. For example, uh, some of the things that you may be asked to do in the exam, like I believe create a cluster, is on the exam blueprint. So, you know, I would expect you to know how to go into vCenter, uh, create a new data center, and create a new cluster. I would also expect you to understand some basic functions like DRS and HA. Maybe not at an advanced level, but at least understand what they kind of do at a basic level. We'll review some of that but it's going to make it a lot easier if you already know that. So again, we're trying to build upon your VCP level knowledge. And I'm going to harp on it throughout here. Hands-on experience is the best. We'll talk about that again in a minute, but seeing as this is a lab exam, you want to make sure you've done everything that's on the blueprint yourself at least one time, if preferably not several times, so that you can get used to doing it. You're kind of quick and you don't take a lot of time. If you're light in some areas, there's a lot of other train signal courses. So one of the great benefits of train signals uh, subscription model now is the ability to hop around courses, go look at other things in the library. So if you're you know a little light on some of your VCP information, you may want to go look at some of the standard vSphere courses. Or you know, uh, for example, if there's some of the other areas here that we're going to touch on, but you want to go deeper, maybe Power CLI. There's a great Power CLI course from Train Signal. So that's the nice thing is that. We're going to hit several things and you can go dive in. If I don't answer all your questions when we get to um, you know, managing the vSphere distributed switch, I have a course from TrainSignal called Advanced vSphere Networking that talks a lot about it. So it'll dig in and even to the places that aren't on the blueprint for the exam and you can kind of expand your knowledge that way. Really cool. That's one thing I like a lot. Another thing is to build and work in a lab. Now, I'm a, a call me a consultant, I guess you would say, so I work with a lot of customers and see their environments and talk to a lot of people. And I understand that, you know, usually you're not allowed to go play around in production, right? That's why I like a lab. I have a lab sitting here in my office at my house, looking at it right now. It's a three-host lab. And I don't just use it for these courses when you see me go through and do things. I break my lab all the time. When I studied for the VCAP, I used it that way I could simulate load. I could, you know, turn on and off features. I could see how things functioned without impacting anything else. So I highly suggest that you kind of get into a lab environment. It's not necessary to view this course in order. Now, some topics do obviously build upon others, and you'll see that when you go through kind of the table of contents guide. But if you need to jump around or you think, well, I'm pretty good on DRS, but, you know, I haven't done a whole lot with the distributed switch, you know, you can jump around and fill in the gaps. That's one nice thing about, you know, looking at an exam blueprint you can kind of check the boxes you think you're good, and you can kind of go hit some things where you're light. So you don't have to do everything. I'd kind of suggest it, obviously, but uh, just coming from someone who sat the exam and who does this uh, fairly frequently as far as you know, working with some of the advanced features, there may be some things that you may not have used or you know, may not know some of these little gotchas. But again, you don't have to do things in order. Let's talk a little bit about the VCAP. Uh, at the end of the course, I'll have another kind of next steps uh, lesson where I'll give you some more pointers and things to look at. But I want you to 
understand what you're stepping into if you plan to take the VCAP exam. Now, of course, this is a, a VCAP kind of study course, but again, it's also on the advanced topic. So if you're thinking, well, I'm just doing this to learn the information, I don't care about the exam, this may not be relevant to you. But a lot of people are going to sit the VCAP. So some information. It's 26 questions, lab questions. There's no uh, multiple choice, nothing like that. There's no drag and drop type Visio questions, kind of like you'll see on the design, the DCD exam. It is all lab questions. So that's one thing I like about these, this exam. There's a couple of things I don't, and I'll, I'll tell you about them, but that's one of the things I like. It's here, go do these things, and here's a real environment. You make it work. It's not just pick the right answer or, let's see, what does VMware want me to answer? How do they think I should solve this problem? It's really very straightforward. They tell you what you need to get done, and you go do it. It's, I say about three and a half hours. If you take the English one in the U.S., it's three and a half hours plus some time for a survey. If you take it in another language, I believe you get 30 minutes. If you are taking it in another language, check the blueprint and the guide and the fact for the exam to make sure you understand how much time you get. But it's three and a half hours. That says, man, you know, that's a long time. I'm one of those people, I always have, that finishes exams early. Back, way back in the day, I'll show my age a little bit, Back when I used to take network exams or the first Microsoft exams, you know, that would kind of base the number of questions on, uh, you know, how well you were doing, I could take those exams in, in literally five minutes at times. So I've always been one to get through very quickly. The VCAP 5 DCD on the first one was the first exam I ever ran out of time on. Uh, so I had an issue with my lab at one point that cost me about 20 minutes, but still, I was right there on the wire running out of time, and I've talked to a few other people who had the same issue. I'll talk about this a little more in the wrap-up section because I don't want you to stress time and all that right now, but just understand that there's 26 lab questions, which sounds pretty simple, but they're fairly in-depth, and they do chew up a lot of time. Passing scores 300, you know, it, it's kind of hard to tell how they score this exam because they do have it where... It's like you don't either get all credit or no credit for a lab question because these questions are usually multifaceted. So you'll find that if you do some things right, you'll get partial credit. And all this is kind of spelled out in, in one of the facts and in the blueprint. So I'm not telling you anything you can't, you know, that's, that's like NDA information or anything. But, uh, you know, there's, there's usually compound things going on within a single question. And therefore, even if you don't get it all, I suggest you do as much as you absolutely can. So keep that in mind, but I don't tell you how to score it. It's just a 300 and up. Personally, you'll get an email, as you see here, up to 15 business days later. Just look for pass or fail. Now, the up to is an interesting one because I personally know people that have gone uh, a good bit longer than 15 business days. So you'll just have to wait. Uh, try to be patient. That's the one of the things I don't like about this exam is, uh, and it's not VMware's fault. I mean, it's a, obviously it's a lab exam. So it's not like they can do instant scoring because you may do something slightly different than I would do something, and an automated system may have trouble checking us. But uh, I'm really impatient. <laughs> I like to hit finish and see a green, hopefully a green bar show up at a view center. But on this one, unfortunately, it can take up to 15 days. So it is 100% lab-based. Uh, you have access to an environment. This is why I'm harping on get your lab and do things and go through it yourself. It's not a multiple choice where you can remember something and just answer A, B, C, or D. You have to do it. The more times that you do something, the faster you will get and the less time you will waste going through things. So it is 100% lab-based. You get a vCenter server, a couple of vSphere hosts. You will obviously have some VMs. You get a full set of vSphere documentation in PDF format, which is handy, but I'm going to caution you. Don't lean on that too heavily because it does cost you time. Uh, anytime you look something up, you'll, you know, obviously be using time that you could spend actually getting work done. You also have PuTTY. I don't think I have that listed here. So for if you want to, you know, SSH into a host, you get PuTTY for that. If you haven't used PuTTY, and I don't understand how you exist as a vSphere admin uh, without using PuTTY, maybe you're a Mac guy like me, but I, I still use PuTTY in a Windows VM on occasion. Uh, get used to using PuTTY. Get used to the fact that you highlight and right-click for copy and paste and understand some things like that. Other than that, it's a standard SSH terminal or Telnet terminal session. But you get access to those tools. 
So that's it. I mean, you have questions, you flip back and forth between your questions and the lab environment, and then it's you're constantly working in the same environment. So uh, they're going to warn you, hey, don't mess with these NICs, these physical NICs, because if you do, that's your management interface. We're not going to, it'll tell you up front in the exam, we're not going to ask you to make any changes to these because it may disconnect you unrecoverably to a host and you're out of luck on the rest of the exam. But, you know, other than that, you are building an environment and doing things to it and fixing problems and adding features, etc. So it's not like question one is in a different environment than question 26. It is all the same. But that's pretty cool. But again, get used to these tools and get used to using them. Also, I'll tell you some of this again in the recap at the end of the course, but uh, this environment isn't always the quickest, especially as you start doing things in it. So uh, I suggest that you kind of get used to jumping around. And also, as you go through some of these labs, as we go through the course, figure out kind of how long some things take. Do they take five seconds? Do they take 30 seconds? Do they take five minutes? Because sometimes you want to kick off a five minute task and then run and go do something else, maybe even go to the next question and start it if you can. But try to use your time wisely. I've said this about eight times, probably no multiple choice or other types of questions. It is all 100% lab. Partial credit is given. I talked about this is where I put it. I knew I had it somewhere. Uh, it's, it is given. There are multiple tasks within a lot of these labs, so just do it. There are scores based on successful completion of a task, not how you do it. So, um, I'm trying to think of a great example of this. Maybe storage vMotion, okay? Uh, you know, if, let's say you had to move a VM's VDKs, VMDKs from one data store to another. Well, I would use storage vMotion functionality built in within vCenter. I mean, I don't know, you could disconnect the VM, copy some VMDKs, change some config files, do stuff the really hard way, and end up with the same result. Now, they're not going to check on the hows, they're going to check on the what ended up happening. I don't suggest you do things the hard way, you're going to run out of time. But, you know, it's not about the how, it's the end result. So keep that in mind uh, and start thinking about, you know, if you don't know how to do something one way or you're running into a problem or something like that, can you think of other ways to solve that problem and then end up with the same result? So again, not the hows, but what you end up with. A couple of things. Here's a link to the blueprint. Um, get familiar with that. It's fairly well written. Pretty much, I mean, it's actually a pretty good written blueprint as far as, as an exam goes. It goes some detail. I have done my absolute best to make sure what you find in this course matches up. I created a spreadsheet, dumped all the stuff from the blueprint in it, started mapping out which lessons in the course, which slides, things like that were trying to match up to uh, everything in the blueprint to make sure everything was touched on and covered. Obviously, they don't tell you depth on some of those things in the blueprint, so we went as far as we thought we should go. And, you know, I suggest you sit down, go through that, and start planning out how you want to do it. It does follow, not always in the exact order. That's one thing that I do a little differently. I don't like totally how the blueprint lays some things out and sections some things up, so I've kind of reorged it a little bit, but it does cover all the topics. Remember, base VCP knowledge uh, may be tested on ideas and processes from that, too. Uh, not just the more advanced stuff, but even the basic. You know, you can do simple things like vMotions or simple cluster configuration changes or SSHing into a host. I'm not going to tell you how to vMotion a VM or SSH into a host in this course. Just remember you got to know how to do that stuff too. I already said this. I'm going to say it again. Build a lab. Since it's all lab-based, you need the experience. It's very helpful to be able to follow along in your own environment as we do things in the course. And I want you to study on things you probably can't do in production. So I want you to test HA. You going to go pull the connection out of a host in your production environment? Probably not. Uh, if you do that and you put in a change control request and get it approved, I'd like to see that. But I don't suggest you do it. I suggest you do it in your own lab. Many good blog posts on affordable home lab setups. Um, there's a lot out there. I have some on my blog, jasonnash.com, but mine are actually a little bit dated meaning it's not the latest and greatest and probably the most cost-effective, but there are plenty out there if you just do a search for vSphere Home Lab. Chris Wall, uh, Chris is a great guy, has a lot of useful information. I'll talk about him again at the end of the course, uh, if not in-betweens. And he has a helpful study sheet. This actually goes back to the blueprint a minute ago, but Chris 
on his site has a blueprint, and on the blueprint, he's got some check boxes, so it's a PDF. In the PDF, he has all the, the topics and then check boxes for studied this and lab tested that. It's not a bad idea to go through and kind of check that stuff off as you go as well, just to make sure that you don't miss anything. If you can't build a lab, take advantage of VMware's hosted hands-on lab. So as I'm reading this now, or saying this now, I guess, uh, those are in beta. Hopefully by the time you're doing this, they will be available to you. But VMware has hands-on labs. Now, their labs don't follow all this, but they have hands-on labs for a lot of the distributed switching stuff, storage DRS, some of the advanced you know, HA functionalities, things like that, that you can do on their labs uh, if you have access to it. So if it's available, take advantage of that. For what I call a single host lab, you can use a tool called Autolab. Autolab is slick. I used Autolab to do my live uh, labs in my VMworld session uh, at VMworld 2012. And I did it with uh, my MacBook Retina machine with 16 gigs of RAM. And I had, I think it was three vSphere hosts, a couple of VMs, a Windows box running vCenter, and a Windows domain controller. What Autolab does is it builds a nested lab uh, within a Windows or a Mac system, and I believe it also works for the Linux version of VMware Workstation. The nice thing is it automates it. So you can take a Windows machine, put Workstation on it, and start building these VMs yourself, and it'll work fine. And if you have enough memory, and I suggest a solid state disk, you can actually have a nice working lab on a single system. More cost effective for most people than a full on lab like I've got here with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of restrictions. But Autolab auto builds things. So it'll run out and build your domain control. You point it to your ISOs for Windows and your install for vCenter and things like that. But then it scripts the install of all this stuff. And then you end up with a nice working environment. And they've continued to add on to Autolab and do things like, uh, let's see, they've got Vue, I think, is in there now. Veeam Backup's in there now. I know they're working on SRM if it's not already done. So there's a lot of really cool stuff. So if you don't want to build out a multi-machine lab with disks and network and all that, but you have a workstation with 8 or 16 gigs of RAM, suggest you check out Autolab. Then another step further is there's hosted infrastructure labs. So one is called Bare Metal Cloud. Bare Metal Cloud is pretty cool because you can basically say, hey, on a monthly basis, I want a couple of servers. You can put VMware, do your labs on them, or they'll just run hosted Autolab. So maybe you don't have a workstation with 8 or 16 gigs, or you have one, like I'm sitting here in front of my iMac, but I don't want to use it for my lab environment because I do other work on it. You can, for a very reasonable price usually, you can go to somewhere like Bare Metal Cloud and spin up Autolab and have remote access to it. So again, you don't have to do it at home if you don't have the space or you don't want to deal with the expense. You can just do it there. Level of material. You do have access to the documentation as you take the exam but it costs you time. And as I said, time is your biggest enemy uh, when you take the VCAP exams. So just keep that in mind. Uh, what I suggest, and as someone told me, they said, you know, I didn't want to kind of dig around the documentation too much. So what they suggested was, and, and I think it's very helpful, is go through the vSphere documentation set, understand what the different books in it are, you know, like the performance guide or the DR recovery one and things like that, and then go through and make sure you understand where the information is. So if you need to look up a command line, you're not digging to remember, okay, which book is it? All right, where's it at? All right, I got to search. All right, what do I need to know? Go through it and understand it. That way it's your fallback plan if you need it. I suggest you learn material at a low level. I mean, I suggest you learn everything upon everything if you possibly can, but that's not always, you know, you know, it's not real world or realistic. I am not a person to learn every switch and option on a command line interface. Uh, I know some people do. I do not. I just have too much other stuff to remember. I do recommend you know all the commands and what their function is. And then if you need to do a low-level command, you don't want to remember all those little switches and options, know where those are in your documentation. So again, maybe it's uh, ESX top, something very simple. You should know that to go to the, like the performance guide, look up ESX top, and you'd be able to find the options that you need to say enable batch mode. So do that, know where you can do it quickly, and then you don't have to try to remember everything, but I also don't want you wasting time going through the documentation. So I kind of go for a happy medium in there. If you're someone who really wants to know it all, by all means learn it all. I'm not going to argue that ever. 
but for a lot of people that's just too time consuming and I suggest you at least know where to look things up in the documentation. You can't memorize it all, but be fast if you need to look it up. Yeah, I just said that, but it bears repeating. Three and a half hours goes quick. I found that out too. Uh, like I said, I had an issue in the exam that I took. Uh, I think something didn't get reset properly, so that cost me some time. But still, I would have been, you know, well into the late game of finishing up, if even if that hadn't happened. So I had to rush some things. So I suggest you learn to be quick and efficient. And I don't think I mentioned this a minute ago in the labs, but it's also why I like having a lab. If you've done some of these things, you know, you've run ESX top a bunch of times, or you've changed multipathing rules a bunch of times, and it comes natural, you're going to be a lot quicker than somebody who's done it once or only read about it. So again, efficiency. But that's it for this one. So we're about to dive in and get started. Uh, the interesting thing about this course is, since it's an advanced course, you don't kind of ramp up like I do in a lot of product courses, you know, where we talk about the overview, what it does, and where it fits. So we're about to jump into some good material, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.